Welcome back. We are now into Module 3, Criterion 2, Program Structure and Content. Criterion 2 consists of seven requirements. If you are looking at the hard copy of the assessment guide, what you see is slightly different. The hard copy guide shows the rating scale, but this PowerPoint slide does not. Only the requirements are shown in the PowerPoint slide. This is so that we can focus our attention on understanding the requirements. The rating scale will be discussed later after all the criteria have been covered. We begin with requirement 2.1. To show that the specifications of the program and all its courses are comprehensive, up to date, and that they are made available and communicated to all stakeholders. The program specifications are a collection of pages explaining the program. What is the body that awards the degree? Has any accreditation been done on the program? What niche does the program fill? What are the admission requirements? What are the aims and expected learning outcomes of the program as previously discussed in Criterion 1? These are the broad overall specifications of the program. The program specifications contain also details about the degree, what courses are taught, the course structure, first year courses, second year courses, and so on. Internship and thesis requirements, research opportunities available while in the program, requirements for graduation, employment opportunities would be a highlight to entice applicants into the program. Benchmarking information that shows how well the program compares to other similar programs from other universities would be shown also in the specification. Also part of the program specifications are detailed information about courses that students need to take. Prerequisites, credit load, graduation requirement information, details of the teaching and learning methods in use, and also details of assessment in use, including assessment rubrics, timelines, examination information, and so on. As you can see, program specifications can range anywhere from a brief two-page brochure to something much more detailed, such as a complete student handbook. It would be made available in hard copy, certainly, and also available soft copy and on the internet. There is no limit on how elaborate the program specifications can be. Some can include an introductory video from the program head. There can be a list of possible job opportunities after graduating from the program. And also to show past graduates who have excelled in their career. These are all designed to sell the program. Let's look at a best practice from the University of Malaya on the presentation of program specifications. Click on the link at the bottom of the slide. This takes you to the University of Malaya website. You are at the University of Malaya website. Scroll down to Admissions, Bachelor. Then click Entry Requirements. Scroll down and select Medicine. The web page shows medicine and tuition fees. Look at the information that they have on the web page. Click on various links. The information is quite extensive. Look at their handbook. There are multiple handbooks actually, each designed with a different audience in mind. And some handbooks are published yearly. Some are over 200 pages in length and they can be downloaded. Much information is contained in the web pages and handbooks, including cost structure or tuition fees, who the administrators are, who are the lecturers, what are the goals, vision, and mission of the various departments and programs. The UM website would be considered a best practice on providing program specification information regarding its programs. They are comprehensive, up-to-date, and provided to all stakeholders. Program specifications are designed differently with various stakeholders in mind. 
What is important for current students are the courses that they need to take and the graduation requirements. For employers, information on learning outcome, skills and knowledge required of the graduates may be emphasised. For prospective applicants and parents, it may yet be a marketing tool to attract the best applicants into the programme. The information in the courses and programme specifications need to be aligned. You will hear this term, as you already have, over and over again. At the top level are the university learning outcomes, also called graduate learning attributes. These need to be aligned with what employers require of the graduates, aligned also with what society require of university graduates. The learning outcomes of the program, school or faculty need to be aligned with the higher level university learning outcome. Then, the learning outcome of all courses in the program must be aligned with the higher level program learning outcome. At the lowest level, every lesson in a course must have its learning outcome aligned to that of the course. This slide shows a good quote by Peter Senji on the concept of alignment. To empower people in an organisation that is not aligned is to be counterproductive. Where people do not have a common vision of what the organisation wishes to achieve, empowerment would lead to people doing what they feel is right but may not be aligned. This puts a burden on management to maintain coherence and direction. But when everyone thinks in the same way and have the same goal and objective, same mental model, everything works beautifully and it is actually easier to get things done. If you think about it, this is actually very true. Take an example from parenting. If both parents are totally aligned, their children get a clear picture of what they need to achieve. But if one parent wants this, the other parent wants that, the child becomes confused and does not know what goal to achieve. Peter Sanji said this in his book, The Fifth Discipline, in 1990, 30 years ago. Today, the concept of alignment and empowerment is still as, if not more, relevant. So, moving from alignment in organisations and alignment in parenthood, what does it mean for a programme to be aligned? It means that each course has to fulfil one or more of the programme's expected learning outcomes, as shown on this slide. This is a course to program ELO's map. Certain courses fulfil certain ELOs. The ticks denote a fulfil or not fulfil requirement. There are other ways of portraying the alignment. This slide shows it in terms of a strength of alignment mapping. One denotes not directly related to the ELO. Two denotes quite related to the ELO. Three denotes related to the ELO and so on. This slide shows an example of alignment mapping between the graduate profile competencies and the ELOs of the program. Various terms are used in different universities and in different countries. As mentioned, sometimes they are called graduate learning attributes, university requirements, graduate profile, and so on. But all need to show alignment with the learning outcomes. As mentioned, there are other ways to denote the relationship strength. For example, the use of one tick, two ticks, or three ticks, or simply a number, one for not related, five for strongly related. This slide shows the mapping scheme of I for introduce, M for moderate, and F for full or 100% alignment. The production of a courses to ELO map is a requirement for an AUNQA assessment. What is important in a courses to ELO map? You are free to use any mapping scheme. It can be I, M and F, 
or 1 to 5. Whichever scheme is used, the value entered need to be justified. This is of the underlying importance. The assessors would ask, why are there so many Fs? Is that really the case? Also, there needs to be balance across all the courses over all the years of study. One would expect the less advanced courses to satisfy the lower level expected learning outcomes. The map provided will be scrutinized and it has to make sense. Are there any empty rows or empty columns or so-called blind spots? An empty row would denote a particular course not fulfilling any ELO. An empty column would denote an ELO not fulfilled by any course. Or put differently, there needs to be a good spread among the various levels of courses to the various levels of ELO. And then there are many kinds of learning outcomes, including course learning outcomes, student learning outcomes, expected learning outcomes, program learning outcomes, university learning outcomes, and so on. One can show all kinds of mapping to learning outcomes, but the most important concept in the map is to show the alignment, which will be scrutinized closely. Another map important to show in describing the program's structure and content is the curriculum map. A curriculum map shows the courses that students need to take over the semesters of study. Let's look at two examples before defining it point by point. This slide shows the curriculum map of the chemical engineering program at Universitas Indonesia circa 210. The program has kindly agreed to let the AUNQA reproduce it. Look at the grouping of the various types of courses. General basic courses, engineering basic courses, chemical engineering basic courses, elective courses, support courses, and capstone or thesis courses. Color coding and box groupings are used to enhance clarity. Notice the arrows to show the relationship among the various types of courses. And of course, the sequencing of the courses from semester one through semester eight. This is a well-designed curriculum map. Another good example is the curriculum map of the Industrial Engineering Program of the University of Surabaya, circa 2014. Read it similarly to the previous slide. The various types of courses, the sequencing and timeline, the color grouping, and so on. There could be as many variations as there are curriculum maps. What is important is the flow and the course groupings over the periods of study. Thus, a curriculum map is a graphical representation of and a planning tool that shows the linkages among all the courses in a curriculum. Its use is similar to that of a courses to ELO map. It informs students of what courses need to be taken at every stage of the program. It can reveal over or under emphasis. If there are any among the various types of courses. A curriculum map shows the semester-by-semester -semester scaffold of graduation requirement. If there are multiple ways to reach graduation, this would be shown also. For example, to do either a thesis, coursework, or practical project in the last semester before graduation. The most important concept in a curriculum map is its alignment. Alignment among the courses and sequencing from the first to last semester and alignment among the various types of courses. Let's move now into looking at the details of each requirement in Criterion 2, Program Structure and Content. The program specifications need to be up to date. The more information provided to applicants, students, alumni, employers, and so on, the better. Note the best practice example of the University of Malaya mentioned earlier. What excites students 
and others when they look at the program specifications. These are the information to include. Information about job opportunities after graduation. Information about different pathways and learning options to graduation. Information that spell how the program stands apart from other programs. As mentioned also, the specifications need to be disseminated to all stakeholders, preferably in customized versions, and use multiple channels. In today's world of social media, hard copy has become passe. Every program needs to get in tune with Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. Here is another example of a best practice video introduction from the psychology program at Holy Angel University, Philippines. Watch the video. It is designed to inform. It is designed to sell. Holy Angel University School of Arts and Sciences has been on the mission to produce professionally competent, morally upright, socially responsible and spiritually mature persons through holistic and transformative liberal education. School of Arts and Sciences offers a four-year degree of Bachelor of Science in Psychology program, which teaches students about human behavior, its interaction to human realities, to creation of spirit of mindfulness through basic and applied research and interventions aimed at solving problems and promoting optimal development and functioning of individual in the society. As a demonstration to the school's adherence to quality education, the BS Psychology program has a Level 2 accreditation from the Philippine Accrediting Association of Schools, Colleges and Universities. While performance of its graduates and professional board exams remain consistently at the top-notch level. Active engagement of psychology society in various local and regional activities, which include organizing regional psychology conventions since 2012, community outreach projects, seminars in support of academics, all of which attest to the dynamism of HAU psych students. To be a psychologist is to be a catalyst for change, producing a society of critical thinkers and ethical researchers in the continuous study of human behavior. Indeed, there is no profession as noble and as powerful. Today, put this power to work for you. Arts and Sciences at Holy Angel University. Laos Deus Semper. Next is Requirement 2.2. The program needs to show that all elements of its curriculum are aligned to achieving the expected learning outcomes. Every lecture and every course, every requirement from the program, from the faculty, and from the university, aligned vertically and aligned horizontally. One might say that everything that is taught and experienced at a university need to be aligned to the expected learning outcomes. Also, under requirement 2.2 is the need to show the courses to ELO mapping. For requirement 2.3, the program is to show how feedback from its stakeholders have been factored into the design and review of its curriculum. Listen to what students have to say about the curriculum. Some universities have a semestral teacher-student dialogue. If carried out properly and with an open mind, the dialogue serves to increase alignment in the program. Alignment between the two elements of what students need and what the program delivers. Not to forget also, listen to the alumni and the employers. What do they need of the graduates, given the fast-changing employment landscape? Requirement 2.4 spells out cautions or issues 
that assessors would pay particular attention to in evaluating the courses to ELO map. These points have been mentioned. And there can be multiple maps or various types of learning outcomes. Courses LOs, program LOs, university LOs, LOs for students, and so on. We note that different terminologies may be used in different universities in different countries. Requirement 2.5 references to the other important map to produce, which is the curriculum map. Note the graphical representation, the routes or learning options available to students, the journey to fulfill, the sense of knowing what is in store for a four-year program through seeing the map in one page, one view. A word on options to pursue additional learning. It used to be that degree programs are in-depth study of a particular discipline. It is deep and narrow. This is the single long vertical line on the left side of this slide. Then came the requirement for students to also be cognizant of the breadth of knowledge and skills surrounding the narrow discipline. This is the short horizontal line. Before long, minus the short vertical line were added to provide an added advantage in securing better jobs. Then, some programs went one up by introducing double majors, two long vertical lines. Such has been the competitive landscape in higher education. And there are yet other pathways. For example, accelerated bachelor and master programs, two in one, or inter and cross disciplinary research based programs. The last requirement of Criterion 2 asked to provide evidence that the curriculum has in place a mechanism for its regular review. This could be a curriculum review committee. Minutes of annual discussions would provide evidence that curriculum issues have been discussed. And input from various sources need to be shown. This could be from a selected list of alumni and current employers. Many programs have consultative committees that have serving members over a two-year cycle. The advantage of such a committee is that following a program over a number of years allows the committee to provide more meaningful suggestions for curriculum improvement. This versus getting feedback from alumni and employer sample only at a single point in time, like for example, a survey. Important for requirement 2.7 is to show that curriculum changes are actually effected as a result of stakeholder input. Curriculum reviews in university typically take place every two years for minor revision and four to five years for major revisions. We come to the last part of module three where we extend from the previous exercise of revising the expected learning outcomes. You should now have about four to five well-crafted program ELOs. This is either for the fictitious sports science program of the AUN University or for the program of your choice. The next steps are to one, produce the courses to ELO matrix or map, and two, produce the curriculum map. The bare program specifications are stated in the handout. The sports science degree takes four years or eight semesters to complete. Each course is normally worth three credits and so on. The university level courses, faculty core courses and others are also stated. Remember the cautions to note in producing the courses to ELO map. Be complete. Do not leave blank rows or columns. Every input into the map needs to make sense. For the curriculum map, proper categorizing, perhaps with the use of colors, and sequencing over the semesters, these are the keys to a well-crafted curriculum map. 
you are free to rebalance the credit loading, the university courses, the core courses, or even to include some of your own courses if you feel that that would improve the program. This exercise is estimated to take one to two hours to complete. Module three ends here. The next module, module four, will discuss criterion three, teaching and learning approach.